So this video is about how you can incorporate mindfulness into your daily life. Because I mean, a lot of the times when it comes to mindfulness, people think it's about, you know, you have to go off to a mountain and live alone in a hut and just eat roots and berries and meditate for 12 hours a day. And really you can incorporate mindfulness into your daily life. And this is extremely helpful if you're struggling with OCD or really any anxiety issue. Learning how to be mindful in your everyday life is going to help with a compulsion that's common across so many anxiety issues and that is ruminating. Or we're constantly thinking about things, there's some uncertainty, and then we try to control that by figuring it out, trying to be certain about it and constantly thinking about it. Okay, so I'm going to give you a couple examples so you can understand exactly what I'm talking about here and you'll also hopefully see in these examples why learning how to practice mindfulness is going to be useful. So I mean, one of the ways that this happens a lot is when people are driving. When people are driving they start to tune out, they're thinking about other things that aren't there, that aren't present, that have nothing to do with driving, right? So they're driving along and they're, you know, they're worried about something, there's some uncertainty to do with work and they're on their way to work, they're driving and they're constantly thinking about what they're going to say to this coworker or to their boss and they're trying to get it right or it's they're thinking about something that happened yesterday and how they should have said this and they should have said that and how can that person say that, they're wrong and they're totally focused on that, they're ruminating, right? it's a compulsion and they're totally not present when they're driving. And so suddenly they hear a sound, it brings them back to the present, and they wonder, did I just hit somebody? It's a very common OCD compulsion. People worry that they've caused an accident or they've hit somebody on the road and they have to start checking and they're going to drive back to see what happened or they're constantly, then suddenly they're looking in their mirrors and they're worried that they've done something terrible. Or another thing that happens very commonly is when we're totally focused on where we aren't at the moment. So we're not in the present, we're thinking about the past, we're thinking about the future while we're driving. And then we actually do make a mistake while we're driving. We cut somebody off or we get too close to somebody or the person in front of us stops quickly and we're not paying attention and we just barely miss hitting them. And that kind of stuff happens all the time and you probably noticed it with your compulsions. Say you're somebody who constantly needs to go back and check if the stove is turned off or the iron is unplugged. There have probably been times when again, you're doing something on the stove, so you're cooking and you are not focused on what you're doing there. You're thinking about work or school or something you want to say to your significant other and you actually have walked away from the stove and left it on without realizing it. Or maybe you turn on the stove to you know, warm it up for something, get the pot, you know, the pan heated up, and you sat down at your computer and suddenly you were totally focused on what was happening on your computer, and then you notice the stove is still on because you start to see smoke coming out of the kitchen and you rush in and you're panicked. And these kinds of things feed OCD because your brain, next time you're thinking, oh, I need to cut out that compulsion, your brain is going to say, hey, but what about that time you did leave the stove on? What about that time you did walk out of the house and the iron was still on? Because you were so focused on what you had to do at work that day, that you totally forgot you had still had left the iron on. And so this is going on all of the time, regardless of what particular diagnosis some professional has given you, or even if you haven't had a diagnosis, and you just struggle with anxiety and you know that. I mean, with social anxiety, we're often so worried about what the other person is thinking about us, and we're constantly thinking, you know, am I doing this right? What are they thinking about me? Did I wear the right clothes? Is my fly undone? Whatever, while we're talking to somebody, that we actually tune out of the conversation we're having, and then maybe we do say something stupid. Or we realize that we haven't been paying attention, suddenly we've forgotten the person's name, we haven't been paying attention to what everybody's talking about, and we can't participate in the conversation, or we become so anxious about participating in the conversation that we shut down. Right? So often, even with social anxiety, we can trace that back to a lack of mindfulness. We're not present in the moment. We're not being aware of what's going on right now. Our brain is off ruminating. We're trying to control an uncertainty. What do people think about us? And that causes us to actually do the things that we're later then going to obsess about. If these things are happening all the time when you're struggling with anxiety issues. We're off ruminating and thinking about something else where our body is doing something else, right? So our brain is in one place, our body is in another place, and that gap, that lack of unity, that lack of presence causes all sorts of problems. That can be a tricky compulsion to cut out because for a lot of us, I know for me, that just seems normal. You're probably sitting there thinking, but that's how I spend all day. I'm just constantly thinking and thinking and thinking about things. Thinking about things I should have said, thinking about things I will say, thinking about things I'm going to do, thinking about how other people should do things differently, what they did wrong, etc. When we struggle with anxiety, this just becomes a normal, everyday way of being. And like I've said in other videos, normal sucks. Normal is what got you to where you are right now. So if that seems normal, that's a great sign that you want to stop doing it. But learning how to stop that compulsion is a skill and it's going to take practice, just like any other skill. And because you don't have a lot of experience doing it, uh, it's going to be difficult at first. 
It's going to seem very strange. And it's going to take a lot of practice to get up to the point where it becomes the new normal, the new healthy normal. So one way you can do this is by starting to incorporate mindfulness into tiny little activities you do every day. So one great way to start doing this is to incorporate mindfulness when you're brushing your teeth. So often when we brush our teeth, we're actually thinking about something else other than brushing our teeth. Unless, of course, you have compulsions related to teeth, in which case you might actually be thinking about your teeth, but you're probably not thinking about brushing your teeth. You're probably worrying about having something stuck in your teeth or worrying about what people are going to say about your teeth or worrying about having your teeth smashed out. Learning how to brush your teeth mindfully can be a great way, a very short amount of time, to practice mindfulness each day. So like any exercise, you have to start small and then you're going to expand from there. So learning how to practice mindfully when you're brushing your teeth is just all about brushing your teeth and only brushing your teeth. Really just quiet in your mind. Just breathe and brush your teeth. Okay? Be aware of how the toothbrush feels. Be aware of the feelings around your teeth. Okay? Again, not thinking, just be aware of what you're feeling. Okay? See yourself in the mirror. See what's going on around you. See your hands, see the toothpaste. Okay? Smell it. Just be aware of what's happening. Okay? You're not thinking about what's going to happen. You're not thinking about what has happened. Just be aware and be present as you brush your teeth. Okay? That's one way you can start to practice mindfulness each day. Notice how different that is from what you normally do. Then start to expand. Look at other things you do every day that you can just start to do a little bit more mindfully. Eating is a great way that you can start to be mindful. Maybe when you're making your food or when you're eating your food, often we're on our phones, we're watching television, we're on our computer, we're doing work, uh, we're doing you know, whatever it may be, and we're not paying attention to what we're eating. Now, when you hear this, you might be saying, hey, you know what? I'm a good thinker. You know, when I think about things on my way to work, you know, I, I think of really valuable things. Like that's where I come up with my best ideas. And you know what, I, I hear you. We are all good thinkers here. That's why we're watching these videos about how to get over the problems that all of this compulsive ruminating causes. And you really have to start to take a look at what's causing the symptoms that you're struggling with. Okay, so say for example, you were dealing with an alcohol problem. Saying, you know, I don't want to cut out ruminating, I just want to get rid of the symptoms, is like saying, I don't want to cut out drinking, I just want to get rid of the, thing, the problems that it causes. Right? You have to start to connect the two. So constantly ruminating and constantly not being present in the world and engaging in these compulsions to try and figure out uncertainties and block off everything around you is causing a lot of problems and cutting them out. I'm just saying, I, it, I was in the same place where I was like, I'm a good thinker. I, I often, you know, people, I always get, you know, great feedback for my thinking. This is valuable to me. I cannot tell you just how beneficial it is to work and to school and to coming up with ideas to not constantly be ruminating on things. It really is much better, uh, you know, creatively, professionally, for relationships, whatever. It is way better to be present. You will see so many benefits to this and it is going to resolve a lot of issues that you're struggling with, but you really have to start to recognize it as a compulsion. Don't let rumination become this constant compulsion that you're always engaging in because you'll just get so good at it that it's only going to make it more and more difficult to stop. So be present. Be mindful. Do little things. Just doing those little things and getting good at doing little things and being present is going to allow you to expand your ability to be mindful into other areas of your life and you're going to be more and more capable of just breathing and being present and it is going to make you feel amazing. So try it out, just bringing mindfulness into your everyday life and removing that rumination compulsion.